Every year in the United States, over 350,000 people die of a sudden cardiac arrest. That's a heart attack. It's also referred to as a myocardial infarction or an MI. And we all know that there are certain risk factors that are tied to having a sudden cardiac arrest. Things like obesity and diabetes and high cholesterol and high blood pressure. But what about hormone levels? Well, we're going to be talking about a new finding that shows estrogen hormone levels are tied to the risk for sudden cardiac arrest. Yeah, there was a published article, Vicki, that was actually reported in the Heart Rhythm Society meetings this year in uh, 2013. And what they found is that when they compared two groups, people who had sudden cardiac death with people who just had coronary artery disease, because they, they may overlap, but they don't have to. Some people just have sudden cardiac death. And when they looked at those people, they tended to have a higher level of estrogen uh, and men had a lower level of testosterone, and women had a slightly higher level of testosterone. Well, this sounds like it's a good idea for people to have their estrogen levels and their testosterone levels checked. Because, you know, many mm -hmm. people, they'll go to the doctor and get an EKG, and mm -hmm. everything's fine. Mm -hmm. They walk out the door and fall dead from a sudden cardiac right. arrest. Well, you have, to, you have to keep in mind that this is an association rather than a proven fact. We don't know that people who have a higher estrogen level... Uh, are the ones that are that, that is the cause for why that is is happening, but it's it's something to look at and and I think really Vicky what it's talking about is a lot of people have reasons for having an overactive sympathetic nervous system compared to a parasympathetic nervous system, and that's why there's this test that's called a heart rate variability test. It's really pretty accurate. In fact, it's the most accurate test in medicine that predicts all-cause mortality, but also heart attack and also sudden death. Yeah, well, a heart rate variability test just shows how your heart is supposed to change in its rate according to what your activity is. Exactly. If it doesn't change and it beats like a metronome, you've got a problem because it means it doesn't adapt. And there are lots of associations like the ones I just mentioned that are very worrisome because they're very serious. Well, people might be asking, how can a postmenopausal woman or a man have high estrogen levels? Really good question. And what we're looking at here is, is there are a lot of plastics and pesticides and, and uh, petroleum products that make something called xenoestrogens. And xenoestrogens mean that these are estrogens that are made from those products that are in the environment that now pollute it widespread. And these xenoestrogens are very powerful estrogens. They're about equivalent to estradiol, which is the most powerful estrogen we have. So when those levels are high, this is what we've been finding. Well, this is what we talk about when we talk about PCBs and PPB, <laughs> PBBs and, <laughs> and phthalates and, like you said, uh, petroleum exactly. products, but the, even chlorine. There's so many things that are in our environment and in the things that we eat, even in some of our pills and some of the time-release medications. Yeah, so they're, they're, these are things that we don't normally pay a lot of attention to. But we look at the risk of sudden death and look at the risk of heart attack and compare it to 100 years ago, this was a rare disease. These are endocrine disruptors, you know, <laughs> and they also can cause early puberty and <laughs> breast cancer and low sperm count in men. Uh, there are other things, too. Absolutely. So when we're thinking about these kinds of problems, we should be looking at the whole person. A lot of the time, it's somebody uh, who has a lot of stress uh, for example, there's this condition called a broken heart syndrome where one person in a marriage or in a close relationship dies and the other one is profoundly affected by it and they actually go into congestive heart failure because the heart goes into shock and it can cause sudden death. But we don't want you to give up when you think about the environment and all the, all the factors that can influence you know, your estrogen hormone levels. But you know, you could even start with something as simple as drinking water out of glass or stainless steel instead of plastic. Right. There are a lot of, a lot of ways to go, so learn more about it. Yeah, and when you do, then you'll be in a much better position because there's a lot you can do where you can avoid these, these compounds in the environment. You don't have to buy foods that have pesticides. You don't have to use things that have plastic. And you should certainly stay away from petroleum products if you can. There are a lot of skincare products that Vicky's an expert on that if you go to drsabuto.com and go to Vicki's Corner, you can learn about safe household cleaning agents and safe things that you can put on your skin. 
these are all important in trying to lower those levels. There are also things that we can do to try and strengthen the heart. A lot of the time we're finding that uh, nutrients such as L-carnitine are low. Those levels are low. So in somebody who's had a heart attack or somebody who's having angina, L-carnitine is depleted very quickly and it leads to a lack in the production of ATP. Keeping in mind that gasoline runs cars, ATP runs cells. So if you don't have enough in the way of ATP, your cells are not going to be able to function like they should, and it's going to make your heart more vulnerable to having rhythm disturbances that can be lethal and lead to sudden cardiac death. And what about fish oil? Fish oil is a good thing, I, I think, to take uh, if you're, I mean, for probably just about everybody. It has very powerful antiarrhythmic effects uh, as well as anticoagulation effects that are that could be life-saving. It works a bit like aspirin, except it's safe. It doesn't irritate the GI tract nearly as often as aspirin does. And of course, it doesn't cause GI bleeds and some of the other things that you see with aspirin. And then what about taurine and CoQ10? Yeah, those are, another, uh, those are other important nutrients to use. Uh, the taurine will help to protect against cardi cardiac rhythm disturbances. And the CoQ10 is low in an awful lot of people who have heart disease. And it's low because they're on statin drugs. And these statins uh, block the production of coenzyme Q10. And without CoQ10, you can't make ATP again. So when we're looking at this whole topic of sudden cardiac death, but also of cardiac uh, heart, just heart disease in general from arteriosclerosis, there are a lot of factors to pay attention to. And now that we know more about this business with estrogen, I think it behooves us to clean up the environment, make sure that we don't put things on our skin or on our body anywhere that uh, have petroleum products in it, and that we make sure that if we do have heart disease that we're checking out the nutrients that we need to be able to stay healthy. How often would you suggest that somebody have an estrogen and a testosterone level done? Well, I don't think necessarily you would have to do that, but it would depend on who the person is. If you have heart disease, or if you have rhythm disturbances, or someone's done some kind of heart test or your heart isn't normal, then you start looking for things like that. So that's a good point. So. Keep in mind that you're in control to a larger extent than you may think of your environment and what you eat and what you put on your skin. And if you'll take care of those things, your risk for having sudden cardiac death as well as arteriosclerotic heart disease is probably going to go down.